Hello, everybody, and welcome back to That Milan Podcast, technically episode two. We have a returning guest for today who we'll get to in a second. He has many different titles. But first, Santangelo is back. No beard at all for the Derby. Um, I wouldn't have done that just because of, you know, kind of baseball bad luck when you shave a beard or even hockey. You can't shave it until you lose. Milan haven't lost yet. So if Milan lose the Derby, you are aware this is your fault, right? Yeah, I mean, it's, listen, if I do please win tweet, um, I'm the reason they win. But if I do the please win tweet and it doesn't go according to plan for the club yes. and they lose, yes. it's my yeah. fault. So, the, the yeah, I'll take full ownership if this team comes out flat. I'll take ownership. Yes. Um, and our returning guest is the last person we had on for the Milan Derby. Um, I don't remember if it was for the league or the Champions League, but Mario Sweatshirt, Mario Gagliano, is back the biggest Napoli fan. Um Here's his Twitter on the bottom. We want, He says now he's the biggest Milan fan um, since they sold Tonali, but that's just Mario being Mario. But how are you, brother? Chilling. Good to be on here again. It's always a pleasure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we couldn't really get too many Inter fans, so uh, Mario, we we had to come back to you because um, wow. at least you're bottom fair. Of the barrel. You're not bottom of the barrel. You were the first choice last time. So <laughs> I was just trying to get new options, but Uncle Sharma's moving around the place, and I don't really know too many other Inter fans. But, yeah, I mean, let's talk about What was it, though? Were you on for the for the derby during um, Serie A, or was it the Champions League? I can't remember. I think it was Serie A. I want to yeah, say. so the, the Serie – yeah, actually, now that I think about it, it was the Serie A one because we did it on uh, on a Friday. So since then, Milan lost all three consecutive uh, matches against Inter, making it four straight. Zero goals scored for Milan within these derbies. Um, we've all three of us have been watching for a very long time, at least over twenty years for all three of us at the very least. Um, I can't remember a time in which Milan played so poorly consecutively uh, in games against Inter that kind of didn't warrant the type of results in terms of like talent on paper. Then again, if you look back at some of the Milan lineups, especially in that uh, derby in uh, Serie A, it was abysmal. No Rafael Leao starting. But Mario, we didn't score on you once in the past four derbies. That's never happened before. Um, why? We have a great defense. We have one of the best defenses in, in Italy, if not the best. I mean, it's been consistent for four years now. Almost. And you lost your best defender of the past 10 years in that process. Yeah. Yeah. And we've just been plugging in play. It's been like uh, Darmian and um, uh, Cherby kind of just holding it down while Skriniar was doing whatever he wanted. <laughs> San Sancho, what do you, I mean, what do you make of like scoring no goals? Obviously, there's a couple of reasons for it. I don't want to make excuses for Milan, but like you start Divac Origi up top in the league. Um, you bench Leao. Leao mm -hmm. has an injury. Again, I'm really not trying to make excuses, but this stuff matters when they're very thin in depth. Like Ben Asser doesn't play the second leg of the Champions League. Um, and at that point, Inter have to play the way that they had to play in that second leg, which was we have a two-goal cushion. There's no away goals in this. There's no reason to risk anything. Mm -hmm. um, and the way to defend Milan at that point and Sant'Angelo, we're broken records with it. Stop Rafael Leao. With those Milan teams and attacks, then you have nothing to worry about. And when he's like 85%, 80% or whatever he was, it was easier for Inter. But Inter thoroughly deserved to go through and win every single derby match um, of the past four. So what have you kind of taken away from these past four performances that you could say, you know, not an anomaly for Milan, but something that probably won't be repeated um, for Saturday? Um, Inter have Milan's number. I think, you know, the performance that we saw um, in the first matchup after Milan won the title um, was a stark contrast to what we saw in the previous four, uh, the next four matches um, in all competitions, right? We're talking cup, we're talking league, we're talking, um, you know, the Champions League. It's Milan were in such a free fall spir uh, spiraling situation um, in that Champions League encounter. I mean, they just happened to kind of limp through. Um, no 
disrespect to the run they made in the Champions League, but I think Inter were sort of trending in the right direction. And they have Inzaghi, who's a good cup manager. Obviously, he's getting that reputation as being as such. So I think when you kind of put everything in the pot there and everything you mentioned um, regarding you know, the limitations we have as a team, uh, when we're so Rafael Leao dependent, at least um, you know, entering this season, um, I think it's pretty natural when you combine that with the fact that Mario did allude to uh, the strength of this Inter team being from the back and being a team that can defend and you know they have their options going forward they have DiMarco they have Darmian they have Barella they have Hakan in the midfield that can get forward and give you goal contributions but they can play that sort of old-fashioned type of Italian game where they're not afraid to get numbers behind the ball sit deep into a defensive shell keep the game in front of them and that's exactly what they did in that second leg um uh, you know against Milan in the in the, in the semi-final so um I think it's going to be interesting to see how both two both sides go at one another in this matchup. Um, obviously, both teams are off to perfect starts in Serie A. La Torre has five goals uh, coming to this. He's absolutely on fire. He's really looking to to make a statement and show that he is the class striker in this league, not Victor Osman, although they're both spectacular players. But I think this game oozes Lautaro kind of having that another moment where he he gives Milan trouble. But I think it's, again, it's valid to give that credit to Inter as being a team that can defend. And despite losing Milan Skriniar, I mean, you know, the season they had from uh, Francesco Acerbi was shocking. I don't think anyone really saw Acerbi playing such a pivotal role for them. Um, you know, given the fact that he was sort of on the decline leaving Lazio, um, there was concerns about, you know, Skriniar, how they going to replace him? They should have sold him and got something back for him. How do you lose a player of that caliber to PSG for free? And they they have a system that is conducive to being able to plug and play someone in his spot and get results. Yeah, and and that's something I wanted to talk about with you, Mario, and just obviously Santangelo, your thoughts. So Inter had their new additions. Obviously, the financial issues for Inter don't go away regardless of making a Champions League final, which just kind of sums up their entire situation. They're still able to maintain the main core. Uh, I think, Mario, I know you weren't a big fan of Andre Onana to begin with. Um, regardless, it's still a big loss in, in, in the point that like this still was the better keeper you've had in years. Jan Sommer, I still think, is a great shot stopper. So you at least have that. In terms of footwork and passing ability, that's just not going to happen. You're it's going to be very hard to find that because also if he was a lead, Byron wasn't going to let go of him with that because the Neuer situation was bizarre. But with that move, Lukaku's gone. Taram has looked great in terms of everything but finishing. It's been a little inconsistent. That Fiorentina match, I think he should have had a couple of goals. There were other instances as well. It was funny how he finished that one shot with France. That was like I don't know how he turns and finishes that one where he skies it in the back. Like it, it, like it was impressive to see. But physically, he's dominant for this league. It's kind of been a common theme with both sides signings this summer. Um, but what have you made of those additions so far? And then Juan Cuadrado kind of being like I guess the super sub at this point, where he comes in 15, 20 minutes, where he's still capable in that wing back position. That's something Matt was talking about with that continuity. Is that these guys can plug and play in this system that the wingbacks are really great. And Carlos Augusto hasn't even gotten to play yet. Um, David Klaassen is another guy that you sign in Bissek and defense, I believe his name is. Yeah. Um, so there's been a lot of guys that you brought in. Not all of them have gotten time yet, including Fratesi. Um, so what have you made of these new additions for Inter? Because again, there's an argument that you could be stronger than last year's side. I don't think that's so far fetched to say. Do you agree or disagree? Yeah, I think uh, I think we have a little bit more uh, quality of depth this year than we do last year. Uh, sure, we lose Brozovic, but you also get Fratesi, and Brozovic was was the best midfielder in Serie A. You could argue one of. Uh, but when he was bad after his injury, he really – it took him like six or seven games to actually get up to the speed, and that was – You didn't even need much... him for the Champions League. That was no, the craziest part, yeah. We didn't. And then he came in and played one of his best games in the Champions League final, honestly. So it's like now we're getting a younger Fratesi who I – I find it kind of weird how it's going to work because everyone was so excited for this signing. I'm like, we just spent like, what is it, like 30 million euros on a player who's going to be Barella. He plays the same spot on the right center mid. He does the same kind of um, 
wide central midfielder role who can push forward and, and obviously contribute in the back. So I was like, we're getting like this weird, I was getting these vibes where I was like, I think he's going to replace Barrel in the next year or two because I don't know. Really? Like, no, you're it's, crazy. It's, it's weird because like we saw screen yard. He's never going to leave. He sacks his agent. And next thing you know, he's walking for free. You want Barella to walk for free by accident? Some some of your stars are like I'm not saying underpaid, but everyone talks about Milan and their wage bill with some some of the some of the money that a guy like Barella is getting. Barella should be easily, no doubt about it, top paid midfielder yeah. in this league. And what's he get? He gets like similar Four. to Hakan. I think Hakan might get more at this point. Hakan makes one of them. I think he has one of the highest now. paids. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah, Santangelo. But Goal. that comes with time, time, and you know. He's still young, so I, think I don't know. I think the Barella situation is interesting too because I think, um, you know, I think we 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 know how attached he is to Inter. We know how much Inter loves him. We know his his role within this team. It's it's obvious. But we said the same thing about Tonali. We're like, this guy's not leaving, surely never. And we don't know. Again, the, you throw a lot of money at a player. Do you? Bring him in with you, the 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 appeal to the Premier League. A lot of these players still yeah. want to go to the Premier League. I know they have the Saudi League, but the Premier League is still the cream of the crop. The fact of the matter is, regardless of whether we think it's better competition than than Serie A or some of these leagues, is another conversation. But it's still the main platform for club football, and these guys want that platform. So I th- I think that this is Inter being a little, probably a little bit proactive. You know, maybe the profiles are similar. But I do do think that Fred Tessi, while there might be some overlap in their responsibility and what they both do, um, I like the fresh legs. I like the youthful injection yeah. that Fred Tessi brings to this team. Uh, Brozovic was was phenomenal. I think there were several seasons where you can make a case that he was really the glue in that that midfield. And oh, I, I was. think if you just go back to absolutely was the the system that has been built from from pre Inzaghi with Conte and then the transition from Conte over to Inzaghi um, and allowing players to come in like Hakan you know Hakan's taking a more deeper role he's playing as more like that regista type of player versus the traditional number ten playmaker that we saw for better parts of his time at Milan and for his earlier parts at Inter that sort of transition for Hakan I think has afforded um, Inzaghi the luxury of being able to have a player um, like Fratesi um, sort of support Barella, because I think both those players are interchangeable in how their assignments can be carried out. You can have Barella charge forward, be a player that goes to the edge of the box and contributes there. But then you can also have a guy like Fratesi who isn't afraid to get in his his feet his feet dirty and his hands dirty and get that work done as a defensive player. So I think that what you said as far as the, the strength of depth, because everyone talks about depth, they've talked about this with Milan, and I think it's important, right? Like you can look to enter second team and I think you can look and have a little bit more confidence as an Inter fan going into some of these bogey matches where it's like, hey, we have a quick turnaround. We have a Monza match. We can put Augusto. We can put you know, Davi Klaassen in there. They can put in a shift and they can do the job for you. So I think that is a testament to um, the project that Inter's built, but also the fact that they've been able to build a pretty steady project and a consistent project, despite not being the the strongest team with a financial position. I mean, I think people still kind of gloss over that because Inter are a strong team and they're title contenders without question. But the fact that they made it to a Champions League final last year and they're still able to build the team they have while working within the confines of a very limited budget is is impressive is impressive in its own way too. Yeah, there's a, there's no way I'm not I can't speak on it fully, but if they don't make that Champions League final, you probably don't see a couple of the additions no. that they made no like shot. augusto like there's no shot with that fee that he went for i know Gosens was sold but you're also talking about your backup wing backs or starters for top half Mercy. sides within Serie A last year um so to just have even regardless of what allegri is doing at, at uve at that point in time quadrado was still productive at his age and position yeah. um yeah so with with that with Inter, Inter have been the favorites because we're all kind of like betting guys in our own ways, but they've been favorites going into the season. They proved it so far. They haven't conceded. Um, you know, losing your best defender, losing your best goalkeeper the past five years or so, they haven't really skipped a beat. What has kind of been the one thing that you've seen? Even Arnautovic coming off the bench as well, immediately yep. making an impact in that first match. Um, I think that goes to the strength of Inzaghi. And it's not to take a shot as well of the three teams that you face. Fiorentino was the first like actual test and you demolished them. It wasn't even close. 
But those first two matches, something that we saw Inter struggle with in the first half of last year, Mario, was picking up those wins. Yep. They lost so many matches for a team that finished in the top four. There was always that devil's advocate of it. Does Inter repeat losing that many matches? Or is that something like, you know, a sign of things to come? Because Inzaghi kind of struggles with this rotation. I guess we'll find out with the Champions League coming up. But again, like guys like Arnautovic, like this attack, are you confident over like 38 matches? Because we know Taram could be inconsistent with finishing. Arnautovic isn't young. He's got, you know, I, I think he's three, four. I don't know what the right word would be for it. He's, <laughs> he's a little bit chaotic as a as a player and a guy yeah. in a dressing room. I'm sure he'll hold it together. But then there's Lautaro who goes through these stretches where he also does some score. Are you slightly worried that like there is a stretch in which Inter's playing um, that they could be missing out on finishing and goals or there's just going to be too many chances to kind of miss out on? It's weird because I I was very... I don't know. I don't know how to say this. I was like, <laughs> like you just said how everybody's inconsistent and that's the life of a striker for any any team pretty much. Like you're going to have one guy that's scoring, one guy that's not yeah. at times. It happens. And last year we had Zeko and... Zeko, as old as he was, was old reliable because yeah. he would always come through. Lautaro was having a bad game. Zeko was shining. He was doing the little things that um, that showed that he was a world-class player. The problem was with the replacement is we don't have that world-class mentality from a striker. We have Arnautovic, who's uh, pretty much like a poor man Zeko, who's a little more – who was more versatile for sure, but he was never up – as that like upper tier striker, he was always like a good Serie A striker. Uh, you know, potential was always there. Never really fulfilled it at, at mm -hmm. Inter, and then sold to Bologna and all these smaller teams mm -hmm. where he never really was like the David Suazo, where he scored thirty goals and made a big name for himself, sort of thing. He was good. Uh, Turam, I haven't watched him much before Inter, but I mean, there's tons of potential there. But he misses a lot of chances. Zeko missed a lot of chances too. So, I mean, this is nothing we're really not familiar with. Uh, Lautaro, so far so good. I haven't cursed him yet. Uh, usually when I curse him, he scores. But, um, you know, he's he's in my good graces for right now. But also we have uh, midfielders who can score always, like yeah. Makitarian. He's forgotten about. And yeah. he doesn't get enough respect because he's an old guy, puts in his work borderline world class even sometimes you could even say i mean that's a stretch but he's <laughs> i know he's mean, earned right? his ability I mean? it's like qualiarella where where he shows exactly. just like those moments in, in a match mm -hmm. where you're like wow this guy is incredible yeah um, so like yeah uh, also like we have the wing backs i'm not a fan of demarco personally we can you're crazy I, I can... you're crazy bro he put in exactly. a better season than teo did last year i thought okay well did you see his 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 assist yeah, against ukraine yeah, of course, of course I did. Okay. But he's all, but he's also one of the players that's helping and creating and scoring at that point. I don't know. It's, it's yeah. that's how I guess that's how modern fullbacks are these days, right? Yeah, I mean, they like, they can't defend. And <laughs> I I like Cuadrado, for example. I think he's. I've always wanted him at Inter. Always. I as believe you as, on that one. As I much believe, as yeah. people <laughs> hate him and he's the biggest piece of shit, Mercenary. you can. I don't even care. I was like, I want this guy on my team because I'd rather have yeah, him on my team than play against him because he's yes. – bite the guy from Juve, not from Inter. You know what I mean? I get you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, I mean, listen. That's – again, I think Teo falls under that same category as well. Guys you hate to play, but love to have on your team. Um, two guys – we'll switch to the Milan side of things now. Uh, Santangelo. We know Tomori got his double yellow against Roma. This was the very Jekyll and Hyde performance that we usually see from him where he looks great one week against Torino, whatever it's against Torino. And then you go and see him against Roma where you're on a yellow card being far too physical with a guy like Belotti, who is virtually no threat at all. He's just there for memes. Um, so with that, you have Kalulu potentially starting mm -hmm. in that spot. He picked up a knock during international break. Simon Kier regressed mightily. Even if Kalulu is healthy, he's had difficulty as a center back in recent matches that he has played in. Mm -hmm. um, and the same could go for Kier. So it's kind of like pick your poison with that. Giroud obviously got that ankle knock. He's training with a group today, so it looks like he will be starting for this one. 
overall going into this, are you worried defensively centrally with Milan? Because again, Grunic starting uh, basically till February um, as the main regista for Milan with this three-man midfield, which is a totally different look than we've seen them approach the past few seasons, especially when they started turning things around. What is your overall kind of feeling about, you know, this center back pairing that might exist? Like, do you have a preference with Kalulu and uh, Chow, or do you have Chow and Kier as your preference with that, with the experience in Kier? I mean, if Kalulu isn't hundred percent, I don't think Pio is the type of guy that's going to trot him on out there. That's just me. Um, yeah. I think that Chow's played pretty well since he became a starter, which I think was actually, um, about in about February, I want to say one of his first big games and big opportunities was against Inter um, in that derby. Um, and then he obviously had a really good um, showing against Tottenham in the round of 16. So it always seems to be against Inter where these guys just pick their their debuts. Well, because well, yeah. that's the thing though, because they always it's get like built in motivation. Though. It's built in, you know, like opportunity, but I think it's a really good stage it's the best to time. see what they got. Um, but Tomori I think, made his name for himself out, out of it. Yeah, that's true. Nah, you're that's right. True. You're right. Um, I think that on one end, I think that Kalu, if Kalulu's ready to go and he feels up for it based on how he does in training the next couple of days, then I think you could see, you know, Kalulu Chow. But I, it wouldn't surprise me for, for Pioli to go the safe route here and give Kair that, that opportunity. Um, and I'm not saying I necessarily hate it because I think, you know, Kair, the experience does, does help in certain sense. Um, I think you just really need to be um, careful where you pick your spots with how you use Kair because obviously aging because of injury history um, and the fact that Milan really don't have much depth beyond you know, a couple guys. So I think it's going to be interesting to see, right? If you have Kair, you know, he's going to be the defender that sits back and Chow's going to be that player that you maybe is a little bit more of the, the ball carrier type and can pass because he has shown he can make the passes necessary to get out the back, but he's definitely not the type of player in my eyes yet, at least where you want him taking a ball deep, trying to beat a press and carrying it out from the back, because I think, you know, you leave Kair exposed. So that part of it's going to be interesting. If you have Chow and you have Kair, it feels like it's going to be a vastly different type of game plan, at least defensively, than you would have with Chow and Kalulu defensively. Um, those two, Kalulu and Chow, are younger, athletic. They can carry the ball. They can do a little bit more for you, whereas I think with Kair, you're a little bit, you're basically going the safer approach and trying to play a game that's maybe more counterattacking based. Um, that, you know, hey, you defend, you get the ball out, you put it into space, and you hope that your guys forward can do the job for you. But I think in this in this match specifically, I think it's going to be, um, it's I think it's going to be high octane. The tempo is going to be there. I think it's going to be a great derby. Um, with that being said, I think that if we do lose. Kalulu, I think that's going to be felt um, just as much as I think, in, in my opinion, with Giroud, um, just because of the simple fact that I think. I'm looking at you know, the lineups, we, Mario. He's so texting me on the side. Stop texting. We're, we're so trying to look at the And I see you guys texting. We're so susceptible to to giving up, you know, defensive issues. So um, two goals scored uh, conceded this year, whatever it was, the two to three. Yeah, goals but were it's, wrongful, a, it's yeah. a different type of it's a different type of feeling. And you know, it's a derby, but in Milan giving up those goals, they've been in positions where they felt like they were in control of the game anyway. So it's it's different. But I guess we'll have to wait and see what the uh, what the rest of the week looks like as far as um, their their training is concerned. Yeah, and what I was looking at on my phone, I wasn't texting anybody, but um, I understand how bad it looks at times. I was just looking at the lineups. There's like three yeah. or three different center back pairings for Milan through um, the past three derbies. Yeah. So like there's zero continuity there. I don't know. Personally, I, if we want to get towards like the end here, I think this one's going to have goals in it. One thing that I guess we didn't talk about was a little bit more like negative and worrisome regarding Milan is that this is a brand new attack. They look completely different than last year. This is, and, and I know Alex Rafa of, um, who's also an Inter fan. I was talking to him yesterday on the kicks and pick pod. He was saying that like, you know, this is the best Milan attack that he can remember. You know, that's coming from an Inter fan. So like, that's obviously very respectful in that manner. We know Pulisic is better than any right winger that we've had in years. I can't even like, I, I personally, he's better than Suso. I know you get a lot of like dingus Suso's out good. there. Yeah, I know. But Suso couldn't run faster than you, Mario, right now. Okay. Doesn't matter. So, 
it does matter when you're trying to play the way Milan do. But regardless, I, I get your point. Um, Chukweze off the bench, you're talking about that depth up there. Okafor had a great appearance against Roma, regardless uh, of that. And and kind of the interesting thing that was mentioned is that, you know, Shiru can't ever run in behind the defense no. as well. So, like, you know, like when, you, when you're preparing with Rafael Leao, it's just the one, uh, like, you know, a 2v1 type of thing where you're trying to stop him. It's easier that way when he's the only threat. I'm just curious to see how Inter kind of approach it. Because as good as Darmian has been uh, against Leao, 1v1, he's dead. Like, they're like, he can't do that. You can't. There isn't a player on this planet, in my opinion, to f- play against Leao for 90 minutes to stop him 1v1. De- yeah. There just isn't a guy out there. I don't I don't think so. Um, didn't he do it already? Didn't do it already. Did, not with didn't this Darmian attack. Do too? Didn't Darmian not, do too? No. <laughs> Not this, not this attack. Not a chance. Um, I don't, I don't see that. It's not the same type of result, you know, because where Rafa was also receiving the ball half the time was at like the the halfway line. So he's in That's the middle. That's where you of the want field. him to. Well, yeah. no. Well, if you're answer, you want him to receive it. No, just generally, if he can get it in in that space where he can just run at the defense, it's more dangerous than just post it up in the top of the eighteen, right? I it, I mean it really especially I guess if you're it, gonna run and gun like that and count. I guess it, it depends where like a Dumfries is at that point. Like don't, if don't Dumfries, worry about Dumfries. He's an idiot. It, it, Milan scored. When was the last time Milan scored? It's been over 380 days. Okay, that's it's been a while. So so I know, but it's true though. Um, we just haven't scored. You would be the same if you didn't score in four straight derbies. Can you imagine that? No. Um, but. Yeah, I mean, I guess running in behind the defense, where does this switch happen? I think also at the same time, Inter have scored the first goal in the derby the past four or five times at the very least. So they're always the one to get off on the right foot. Um, and last year's first derby. And in Serie A as well, just one more thing. I thought we've played Inter very well within the Simone and Zaghi era, within Serie A. I don't believe we've lost many. Um, the year we won the Scudetto, we didn't lose a match. We had a draw, then a win. Um, we won the first one last year, and then we obviously lost 1-0 um, in the league. I don't know. I think it's a 2-2 vibe, honestly. I think there's going to be goals, and this one's going to be tighter than some people think in terms of like you know Inter being the better squad. I think Milan have a better mentality heading into this one. There's like a fresher vibe heading into this with the new signings and all that. I think this will finish 2-2. I think there's going to be a lot of goals. I would probably say 2-2 two, two is a pretty fair prediction. Um, I think that, it, look, I think me, the, for, I'm not going to go clean sheet for Milan, that's for sure, because no, obviously... That's a, well, that that would be the most stunning yeah, result, that, right? No, Milan I don't, clean sheet is, win? I think there's yeah. going to be goals in this. I also think that, um, you know, look, Inter, they they coming off a UCL final appearance. They know that the credit has been given to Napoli for the season they had last year, all warranted. The expectation is also for Napoli to be, um, you know, repeat winners. I know they've lost players, but still the odds say that they're the favorites for most um, with Inter falling right underneath them. I think you guys. They actually, they actually, that. well, real quick, I, now, they dropped yeah. fourth, bro. They're actually fourth highest odds now. They're behind Juve, which is. Pretty which is, which is yeah. disrespectful to Inter, to be honest. Like, I think that's a slap in the face. Well, no, no. Napoli is fourth. Inter is fourth. Oh, Napoli is fourth. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, sorry. But in any case, I think they've also seen the buzz that Milan have gotten with this whole like revamp. A lot of these new attackers. They've all got off to a really good start, winning three of three. And so I think Inter are going to come out with a little bit extra. I think that there's a statement to, to be made there by Inter. Um, maybe maybe they feel like they're being overlooked in the whole conversation as the top top teams in Serie A. We know they're in that conversation. But as far as being the favorites, I think this is a type of match where they know they've had Milan's number. And they know they've been off to a great start. I, I think they're going to come out with just a little bit more bite in this one. Whether or not Milan can withstand that, like Mignon's going to have to do a good job in goal. Ultimately, whoever is in the back defensively is going to have to put in a great shift because we know that Inter is going to create chances and Milan, that's Sir Keely Seal, is defending. So I think that 2-2 two, two is a pretty fair one, but it, it wouldn't surprise me either way to see to see Inter win this as well. But I think 2-2 two, two is probably what I'm going to go to go with because I think it's going to be very, very back and forth. And, and again, I think it's going to be a very exciting derby. Mario, what do you think? You guys are very optimistic. This is going to oh, be 2 nothing. Right. Two nothing Inter. Two nothing Inter, really? Okay. Yeah, I think so. I think they just did defensively. 
they they know how to contain Leao. They've done it, and I don't think Leao has enough of that influence against this sort of inter team where he can just come on and create. I think they're going to neutralize Leao, and then Milan's going to struggle to have a different uh, answer of how to, to score. Uh, this team just it's it's too organized, honestly. I think um, defensively, they haven't let up a goal, and I don't see them letting up a goal from Milan. I feel okay. like they're this is this is like a statement game that if Inter's going to win the Scudetto this year, this is going to be the game that like, I think this yeah really I think you're right. Yeah, I get what uh, you're saying. And I don't think Milan's defense is as good as it can be like if you if we come in the second leg of the season and you have a full defense different story i think yeah. milan can, can can get that 2-2 uh and keep inter on the ropes cuz i think just that right now inter's flying their midfield well that was a, that was going to be my my question i know you got a work thing um yeah hold but, on a second yeah you're good you could uh, or I'll move you for a second um Santangelo, midfield matchup. I think this is probably one of the more interesting ones. I still think Inter have a better midfield mm -hmm. in the sense of technical ability. Um, but Reinders and, and Loftus-Cheek, this is their first derby. This is their first type of intensity among this. Inter mm -hmm. are the home side within this one. So that should also be noted at the same time. Physically... They obviously match up very well. Loftus Cheek mm -hmm. is the most physical midfielder uh, in this entire matchup. We've seen how well they've worked through the right side. Possession wise, do you see Inter controlling more of it? I think I would. I would be a little. I would approach this differently if Benacerra was in there. But obviously, we have Krunic as the regista. That's what kind of worries me. I think in general, um, Inter's midfield is still at it at an advantage, and I'm just going off of their reputation. I just wonder what Reinders and Loftus Cheek can bring to this matchup because they're the two players that we haven't seen go against Inter like that. Again, Mario, uh, we were just saying like the physicality of Loftus Cheek and um, Reinders' overall quality. I'm just curious to see how they go up against Inter's midfield, which I th think at this point is still the best in the league, um, right up there next to Napoli. But Matt, you first. Uh, any any thing that you could expect from them that might be a big boost as opposed to what we've seen in recent derbies? Um, I think that's Ruben Loftus-Cheek. I think he's been the glue midfielder for this team the first three matches. Um, I know we've talked about Pulisic. We've talked about Leal. We talked about all these other players. Reinters has looked good in his own way as well. But I think the the, the experience that Ruben Loftus-Cheek has brought, the pressure he's played with, um, and he's been, by all accounts, you could say Milan's top one of Milan's top two to three players the first three three matches so far yeah. just for the simple fact again you talk about his ball carrying his strength his stability that he provides in the midfield I think in a match like this those are the types of players and performances you do need they're so so vital to getting a result in a match like this um but I think again it's this this inter team I think they can go at you in a couple different ways so are Milan going to have the opportunity to play a possession game I don't think they're going to I think that inter is going to get the possession in this game um and I think they're going to create more chances ultimately I think it's if Milan can be efficient with their chances we we talked about this last year Martino um, <laughs> yeah. as a team that you know people said they don't create enough chances they don't do enough of this they don't do enough of but that it's the opposite yeah but yeah. I think at the same time you know, we've seen this year that they're a little bit more efficient with what they're creating. They're able to capitalize on that. So if they can do that, I think that they'll get a, a good result here. And 2-2 would be, in my my opinion, a good result, given how many yeah. new faces that Milan have in this team. Whereas I think with Inter, their team is more or less a, an established foundation with the addition of a couple new players. But 2-2, um, again, I'm, I'm sticking to 2-2 on this one. All right. Um, yeah, 2-2 two -two for me. Mario has 2 nothing. Five straight times he is, uh, that would be for Milan, not scoring at a derby. That's never happened. So we'll we'll see how that goes. I mean, you could 
probably bet some money on it. Um, I do know if you take both teams to score an inter money line, you get around plus 300. So if you're interested in kind of stuff like that, inter wins like 2 1. I do think just both teams will score. I uh, I think that, and I also think over two and a half. I think there's easily three goals in this see, one. Um, I'm not going off of like the past like derby within Serie A. That was like Milan went full formation. They were like, we're sitting back, we're trying not to concede. We have Tatarusano in net, who's conceding more goals than uh, Rui Patricio was at that point. Um, so didn't he have this game of his life against Inter though? He was he always played pretty well against Inter. That's the funny always. thing. That's um, and he's awful versus everyone else. Awful. No, no, um, yeah. he he did uh concede the penalty though. I forgot who was the um. Well, obviously he was the goalkeeper. I forgot who actually committed the foul. It might have been Gabia because Gabia. Wait, no, who was it? It was I think it was the wing. Who was the dingus that did it? Somebody. I think it was Gabia. Honestly, I think he hit uh one of Inter's wingbacks in the box. He clipped them on his calf. Uh, Gabia had an awful feature for a few months uh Fratesi also dusted him in that Sassuolo game um but yeah 2-2 two, two, uh 2-0 two and 2-2 two, two all over the place um can I just be a Milan fan for a second sure go for it I think the um, Loftus cheek might be the signing of the season for the whole league the whole league I think I think he was a lot more disrespected than some people yes. like want it like Chelsea is such a bizarre situation and we've also Nobody's seen it there. It's and it's not even just like this recent era. This has been going on for like 15 years. Shevchenko. Well, Shev Shev is a little different, but like um guys like Kevin De Bruyne, Mo Salah, like all young. these guys, like you know, like it's been a consistent thing where stuff doesn't work out. And also he was completely played out of position. Um yeah. so so we'll see. Also, final thoughts on um your boy Captain America, Mario. You think he's going to continue on this trend of playing very well in this league. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's going to be a top, he's going to be a top player in this league within the next three, four years. He's, he's too good. Uh, he's still just after, 24. It's that's yeah, the most remarkable part. That's, that's what I'm saying. He's only going to get better. Serie A is a place where you can make your career. And I think Pulisic is in the right environment to do that. Uh, as long as he has the support from his coach and he can stay healthy. I think that he's going to be a very important player for Milan going forward. It's like, uh, like what Kiesa should have been. Mm. sort of thing for you though right uh yeah i think i think he is a better athlete but i get what you're saying i think the one thing that's going to be interesting too um this is just my last thing but the the thing that's going to be interesting too is how pioli juggles um pulisic and chukweze because i think everyone looked at pulisic as the one you know edition that was you know like oh this is a marketing edition this is a commercial edition they're bringing him in because he's american but he's off yes. off to a great start and chukweze who you know obviously is going to be taking a little bit more time to integrate because he arrived later uh how purely juggles using two players who are, are starting quality he's never had the luxury of having this much attacking depth how does he manage the two personalities how does he manage the two players who are going to go into training thinking I'm a starting player. I should be starting yeah. for this team. So how he does that the rest of the year is, is going to be interesting. But as of right now, like you can't argue with Pulisic as a starter. He's he's producing too much. And, you know, yeah. that's the guy that you're obviously going to roll with for, for a match like this and going forward. Oh, yeah. And Pulisic. Damn, actually, him against DiMarco, he's going to dust DiMarco. I mean, was it, that's, the, that's the whole interesting part. Yeah. It's like the right side for Inter. And it's not disrespectful to Inter, but it's like they've never – had to really worry about the right side the past few years. I don't think mm. to this extent. Um, also in the schedule for Milan is in the derbies uh, Saturday, obviously Tuesday, quick turnaround to Newcastle. Then you have Verona, Cagliari, uh, and then Lazio all throughout the rest of the month. So we did have to struggle with days. Quadrado for fucking seven years. So we saw how, how easily he works on Di Marco. So, you know, I, I get what I, you're saying. I get what you're saying. That, that's it. You you kill me though. <laughs> like praising Inter all day, Milan not going to score. It's like I forgot about the one player. Yeah. Right? So <laughs> that we, you despise who's can... so good though offensively. I think <laughs> like honestly though, like offensively he's terrific. I get what you're saying. He he's though? not a good defender. He he's though? not a good defender. Offensively, yeah, I think he's one of the better ones. He's one of the better set piece left backs in the world. He's not a set piece. Or, take. Oh, don't even get. You don't think he's what? good at set piece crosses? No, him in? no. 
No, I think I don't because... agree with that. I think you're nuts. Really? No, no, no. Go for it. No, tell me why then. I haven't, I haven't heard that before from. How many goals has he scored on the free kicks when he's the first choice? Well, he's not always taking them as as shots. He's swinging them in. He's because taking of the them areas. as shots. He's taking them mostly as shots. Okay, how many goals have we scored off of free kicks that he's taken off of off of free kicks like him score? I don't have the numbers in front of me, but he's always putting in dangerous crosses, bro. Constantly, he's the main threat out wide. To the to the didn't, first, he, didn't he have the most defender. assists for you guys last year? Uh, not off of crosses, not off of free kicks. He, he maybe had one or two. He had four assists last year. Okay, that's well. Not, sorry, three okay. assists. Excuse me. Okay, so that's not really defending your, your, your thesis Mark, over there. Listen, <laughs> no. my uh, he puts in a lot of crosses, and they actually technically get um, uh, completed. But the problem with his crosses are he's crossing from the left byline to the opposite side of the 18-yard box where Lautaro will pick up the ball. Tell me how that's dangerous. Yeah, you don't want Lautaro picking the ball up there. You want him more so. With the clear More centrally, the ball, yeah. you want you don't want Deco having to travel outside the box to receive a cross, and then c- counter is completed. Yeah, that's fair. you know what I mean. Like, yeah. the, I think the numbers for him are, are skewed. I think he's an average to above average left back. That Inter fans are really just coping with the fact that they lost Perisic because mm. there was really no. Well, DeMarco overall, Perisic is clear. Yeah, I mean that's not. That, you, you, you're telling me that there's not a huge drop off from Perisic to DiMarco. I just said he's clear. I'm sorry. I'm trying to get excited. <laughs> you're good. I just said Perisic is clear. Yeah. And by the way, DiMarco already has two assists this year. Okay, good for good for him. Yeah, yeah, but, good for him. I mean, he put yeah. in a better year than Teo last year. I I don't know what to tell you. It was I I don't know. I get what you're saying though. But you, but like what the final thing I would say is like, what do you expect Inter to grab at that point? I know, I understand that, I, and that's why I'm saying that everyone thinks he's this amazing left back when he's really. Well, Inter, there, I never seen anything propaganda wise for like a club fan base like Inter do with players. I like Interisti do is just like they think everyone is the hottest shit that you've ever seen, um, and you would think that you guys have won more than one scudetto the past thirteen years or whatever it's been, but I digress with that, right? That's not uh, true. <laughs> <laughs> Both of your squads struggling, bro. Um, all right, yeah. So plug your stuff. I know you're, you're not you're not much of a troll account. I mean, you are a troll account, but when you're serious, like now, come on. I mean, bro, it says biggest Napoli fan, and then uh, your picture is a Napoli player, <laughs> and then you have uh, San Siro in, as your banner. But just plug some of your stuff in your work as well. You uh, you can catch me on the Interworld by podcast every now and then. Uh, Mario Switch on Twitter, Mario Dowski on Martino's Instagram, always pinned. Bro, already insulting my kit, the new kit I got. No, Sorry. that was actually a or what was it? question because those jerseys, the Puma jerseys, authentic or they run tight. Normally, um, this one isn't as tight as the other ones, but okay. this one that was oh, this one's very question. this one is very thin material though. Yeah. So the authentic not one is not most. as the, the authentic one is not that. But you can't blame me. Mario goes like, "Oh yeah, does this does this fit seven sizes smaller than than this?" And I was just like, "This asshole," and, you know. Um, I, I didn't. I, it, can you blame you wanna, me though? No. Um, <laughs> let's say you want to buy a, a Sampdoria Kappa jersey. Mm-hmm. whatever because i'm going back to like 2000 fucking 10 you have to buy like a triple xl for it to fit like a normal yeah. person puma I, I think it always and, uh depends upon authentic and replica as well replicas yeah. usually are like baggier and not as bad yeah, i think the this one more. was more authentic this was a lot baggier this was from a year or two ago's weight yeah. kit um so that's like kind of what you're getting team kits the national team kits were always tight I don't think I've yeah. liked a single national team kit the past like ten or fifteen years. I don't like any of them. I don't. I don't think they look good. I, I can't. never buy them. What there was one that was like I guess it was the special edition. It was like that greenish one. You know yeah, what I'm I talking that. about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. one was like pretty nice, but I don't even think that was an official kit. I think that was just like oh, it's a special edition. We're selling these. I forgot who mm-hmm. who the who the company was at the time, but I don't like anything yeah. from the Azuri stuff. But uh. 
Yeah, Santangelo, plug your stuff as well. I know you've written more work with Milan Reports and um, more stuff at Football Italia. Yeah, um, follow me on Twitter. You can see it on the bottom, uh, Matt underscore Santangelo. A Serie A fantasy content coming out probably ahead of uh, match day four. So you'll see that on my timeline very soon. Uh, Football Italia, doing pretty much bi-weekly articles for them. And Milan nice. Reports, I did something um, you know, during the international break on Luka Jovic, who... Um, was Milan's last signing of the summer. Just kind of gave my I forgot about him. Yeah, I gave my kind like of perspective him. on the signing, like what we can expect from a player, and ultimately like my reaction to the deal. So all that is on um, on my Twitter. Uh, yeah, actually, it just reminded me of something because of the derby. You saw that Luka Jovic fan account that's just been beefing with yeah, Inter fans, dude, by the, the way. The, prop, the propaganda has been nuts, man. The, the prop propaganda. Bro, he even put in FIFA highlights. I was crying. <laughs> this shit was hysterical. I was dying. Yeah, he got an entire fan base on strings. There was one point I saw Inter fans replying <laughs> that they thought it was the actual Jovic, and it was so funny. It was like, I forgot who it was. He was just like, yeah, no wonder you've been at like three or four different clubs. It's like, that's not Luka Jovic, you fucking idiot. So, like, good Johnny? job. Was it Johnny? Uh, I'll tell you who it is afterwards. Uh, I'll tell you who it is. I got blocked by this person. Um, but I'll oh, tell you. Uh, it's it really coward. funny. Um, I think so. I didn't even interact with the guy. But, uh, yeah, Mario, we appreciate you coming on. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll see if you're predict- – do you want to change up your prediction because you remember DeMarco is still 2 nothing? I'm going to go 2-1. Okay, uh, yeah, I give you I that want out. The, I want yeah. the over two and a half. <laughs> okay, there you go. Um, and then, yeah, obviously, guys, subscribe to the podcast. Um, everything gets uploaded here on YouTube. We're on Spotify right now. We're, we'll try to get it on Apple as soon as possible. I just have to get the dimensions right for the picture. Um, and then, yeah, just follow everything on Twitter, Instagram. You can see Mario troll me on there. You can, be Santa- you can see Santangelo being serious and, and decent on there, opposite of Mario. So, um, again, AC Milan bros as well. Definitely a good spot to go and check some of the stuff like live reactions and other clips. But uh, we appreciate it. Mario, we'll talk to you guys next time.